So what is up guys, this is Nick here from Everything Tech and welcome to the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 2016 full review. Now, if you haven't been around this channel before, basically what we do on this channel is do full in-depth reviews where we try to find out everything that we need to know so when we leave this video, we don't have to do a bunch of research because we pretty much figured out everything we need to know in detail here about the product that we're interested in. So, this video will be time-coded and what that essentially means is I will leave sections that you can go to in this video if you don't have time to watch the full review. You can find that down below in the description area of this video. But with that being said, let's take a full in-depth look at the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 2016 and see if it is worth your money. Let's get into it right now. Let's go. Alright guys, so let's begin this review with a hardware tour of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 2016. So on the front of the device, you're going to find yourself that 7 inch 1280 by 800 TFT display, which is 216 pixels per inch. Now this display is not AMOLED, but it is pretty color accurate and it's a pretty nice display overall. It's an IPS LCD capacitive touchscreen with 16 million colors. Now. At the bottom of the device, you're going to find yourself a home button with a multitasking switch key as well as a back key. And these capacitive keys do not light up. So if you're wondering that, let's get that out the way right now. You do have a little bit of metal around the home button. And we'll talk more about the home button in the build quality section. And then at the top of the device, you're going to find yourself that secondary 2 megapixel camera here. That's f2.2 aperture for the Samsung right here. And at the top of the device, you're going to find yourself those micro USB ports right there and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack right there, as you can see. Now, if I flip the device over to the right side, you're going to see that we do have the power button right here. And then we do have the volume rocker switches right there, volume rocker switches. And then on the side, it's just kind of a charcoal looking gray metallic plastic feel. It's not metallic, but it looks kind of like that you know it's a faux metallic look so at the bottom we do have a mic right here and then that's about it on that side now if we flip it over to the right side of the device we're going to find ourselves that micro sd card slot right there which is expandable up to 200 gigabytes on the micro sd i do have a 64 gigabyte card in there to show you an example of the storage later on throughout this video now on the back of the device you're going to find yourself like i say that five megapixel camera here and that is capable of up to 720p hd video at 30 frames a second and over here to the left of the device you're going to find yourself that speaker grow right there now you do have the Samsung branding right here and we do have a very grippy texture back here for the Galaxy Tab A so if you're into the whole you know grippy feel this has got a very grippy feel here energy star branding right there and that's about it in terms of the hardware tour of this device here now let's get into the internal specifications of this device right here so guys, we laid out some of the external specifications of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 2016 and but now I want to talk just a bit about what comes on the inside of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A just for all those spec geeks out there. So this is rocking Android 5.1.1, which we will confirm later. That's lollipop Android. That's not marshmallow or nougat. So it's a little bit behind in terms of the software, although most applications will work on lollipop just like they would on marshmallow or you can say nougat. Now this does rock a Snapdragon 410 CPU that's a quad core 1.3 gigahertz Cortex A53. This does have an Adreno 306 GPU and um, there's also another model with a Spectrum SC9830 processor. It's a quad core 1.5 gigahertz Cortex A7. So those are the two processor options, either a Snapdragon or we do have a Cortex A7 CPU. So let's go into CPU-Z and see which model I got. So let me go home here 
and that's files that's not where we want to go let's go into the cpu z and confirm the model i got okay so i got the cortex a7 series the 1.3 gigahertz so this is the snapdragon series of the device so yeah i think most of you guys are going to get the snapdragon series because that's the lower end processor of the galaxy tab a but yeah that's what it features there now this does have 1.5 gigabytes of ram and it does have a 4000 milliamp lithium ion battery and basically what that means is that you should be able to go the distance as this is less than an HD screen with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Now this also does have Wi-Fi BGNN, so it's the standard Wi-Fi signal. It doesn't have AC, which is the quicker Wi-Fi standard you'll find in more higher end tablets on the market. Now this does have, you know, Bluetooth 4.0, it does have GPS, it does have an accelerometer, but I don't see a gyroscope for this device. So if you're trying to play Pokemon Go, it might be a little bit of a, let's say, handicapped experience on the device. But yeah, I think those are the specs that really matter here. You know, you, you should have a talk time of up to 11 hours if, you know, you're going to be doing things like that. You do have a music play time of up to 100 hours here. And this does come in only two colors as mentioned in my unboxing video, which is pearly white and metallic black for this device. It does weigh 283 grams and it does come in at 8.7 millimeters on the thickness. So yeah, with that being said, talking about the the thickness we covered the specs here it does have eight gigabytes of storage i do have to mention that with the micro sd card expansion slot now that we covered that let's talk about what i think about the hardware quality like the build quality of this device let's get into that section right now all right guys so i want to take a moment to talk about the hardware and my thoughts and my experience of the hardware on the samsung galaxy tab a 7 inch so if you look right here you do have kind of a line texture back but this is a very grippy back and i want to start with that it's a very grippy tablet and it's plastic but this device feels quality for its price um, even more so than something like the Amazon Fire tablets. Those feel plastic. This does not feel cheap whatsoever. The screen does attract pretty much a lot of fingerprints, as you can see right there in that example. But overall, I'm very pleased with the quality of this device. And the home button on the Galaxy Tab A here is a very clicky affair. So if you like clicky home buttons, this is going to be a very nice quality home button here. And it does have, it just has that reinforcing feel that you did buy a Samsung product with the whole build of this device. Now, at, a, at this price, I think you're getting really good build quality here on the device and everything feels nice and like snug and put into place the battery door or not the battery door the micro sd door um even putting the sd card in there felt nice and tight and everything just feels very nice and snug and quality even the door on here closes nice and tight you don't have any hang action going on right there and pretty much everything just feels nice now i know it sounds like i'm being biased here towards samsung but i just got to keep it real with you i'm just sharing my experience you don't have to like the quality but i I can tell you right now if you're looking for a device that a tablet that is cheap and you want strong build quality the Samsung Galaxy Tab A is going to give you that so don't fret at all if you're wondering about does that tablet feel cheap because it does not feel cheap and in terms of the screen build, the screen build is pretty solid. I haven't got no scratches on it yet. And even if you do get scratches on it, I don't think it's going to bother you all that much because they're not going to be very noticeable because it's just a pretty strong display overall. So yeah, even the camera bump right here, it sticks out just a little bit, but it feels like it's, you know, it feels pretty quality. But if you're worried about getting that camera scratched right there on the Samsung Galaxy Tab A, go ahead and get a case for this device. It might help you out pretty well it might help you out a lot so over here on these buttons I do want to talk about these a little bit they're easy to recognize where they're at because of the spacing between the buttons and they do feel pretty clicky now they don't feel super high quality the buttons but you know they're buttons that are functional and that's all that matters if you ask me so yeah that is my thoughts on the build quality of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A it's a go on the build quality all right, guys, so let's take a second to talk about the whole screen quality and resolution of the display that you're going to get here on the Samsung Galaxy Tab A. Now, this is not an AMOLED display, so don't expect very vibrant 
popping colors, but for an LCD panel, this is a pretty vibrant display. Um, I don't know what Samsung does. I feel like they tweak the colors a little bit, or maybe it's just me seeing the TouchWiz UI as just a colorful software. Maybe it's just that. But overall, this display for not being an AMOLED display is pretty nice and punchy in terms of the colors. Now, it's not going to be, like I say, it's not going to give you those deep blacks. It's not going to give you those ultra vibrant colors like you're going to get on the more premium Galaxy Tab A line of devices, but or not the, the Galaxy Tab S line of devices. The A line doesn't have the AMOLED. But if you get the AMOLED devices, you'll really notice the difference. But Overall, I think you're going to be very happy with this display at its price point. It's pretty color accurate and it has pretty solid viewing angles. It does wash out just a bit when you curve it really a lot. But overall, who's going to be looking at a display like that? I really don't know who's going to be looking at a display on an angle that sharp. But in terms of the sharpness, it is 1280 by 800, 216 pixels per inch. Now, due to the overall stature and the size of the display itself, because your eyeballs are going to be looking at the display from such a distance you do have the ability to read text pretty easily on this display here now in terms of the overall you know just sharpness like i say it's not going to be incredibly sharp but it is sharp enough to read what you need to get read so let me go into the display settings and see if we have anything also though you do have the ability to go ahead and change the font on here so if you need a more of a bold font right there because it's a little bit hard for you to read you're going to get it there on the samsung galaxy tab a also, you do have some screen modes here. You do have adapted display and reading mode. And what reading mode does on this display is it turns it into more of a reading, more of a warm tone display. So if you kind of know what Apple does with the true tone display on the iPad Pro, or you could even say what Amazon does with their whole, you know, blue shade thing. It does pretty much that. It warms up the temperature display, making this a great reader device. But overall, if I had to give this display a score of 1 to 10, I'd give it a solid 7 out of 10. I had to take away a few points because it's not going to blow your mind, but this display is not going to disappoint you for the price you pay. And in terms of watching videos, once you start watching some HD videos, I think you're just going to kind of forget about it and just get to enjoying the content that you are watching on this display. So yeah, that is the display, the overall screen sharpness section of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 7.0. Now, let's get into the Android software included within this device. All right, guys, so I mentioned earlier that we are running version Android Lollipop on the Galaxy Tab A 7.0. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm that here really quickly here on this device. So let me go down to About Device. And you can see right here that we are running Android version 5.1.1 Lollipop. Now, I did do a couple of software updates. It did some bug patches. It had a few Samsung updates, but nothing that turned it into a major software update. So right now, if you go out and buy this tablet, you're going to be stuck running Android Lollipop. But I don't want to say stuck as in the sense of it's a lacking experience because with the TouchWiz UI, you can update to Marshmallow, you can update to Nougat, and your experience of this device is pretty much the same regardless if you go to the newer softwares or the older softwares because when you're messing with a Samsung device Samsung keeps their devices pretty much even across the board it's just like an Apple device if you if you have an Apple device that runs iOS 10 and you got an Apple device that runs iOS 9 yes there's some minor changes you're going to see here and there you know the techie people people who pay attention to you know software and all that will notice most of us will notice some of the cool new features but overall the general experience the general overall ux experience is going to be similar but samsung does throw in quite a bit of features here of their own so let's find out what samsung included with samsung special features let's go so basically what I want to do here is basically a Samsung rundown, software rundown. So we're going to look at these special features and mostly what you're going to get included. So right out of the box, you do get CNN installed from Samsung, radio, Samsung kids, and you do get the whole Samsung skinny here going on on this device. So you can see you do have skinned icons. You do have, if we go into the camera, you do have the newer camera look from like the Galaxy S7 and things of that nature. And you do get quite a bit of modes, but we'll talk about that in the whole camera section of this device now if I go ahead and hold down 
the screen, you're going to see that I do have wallpapers. Here are the included software wallpapers that Samsung includes here on this device. So those nice newer wallpapers. Now you might like these, you might not. That's totally up to you. I think they're pretty nice. And over here at the top, you do have a blue themed out notification tray. Now that's a little bit different from the S7 as it's white on the S7, but you can see you do have some features here, power saving. You do have power saving mode here. You do have reading mode, ultra power saving mode for those times that you need a crazy amount of extra juice. And you do have syncing, do not disturb, outdoors mode to jack up the brightness outside. So that's pretty nice. It really does crank the nits up for if you're outdoors. So you can see easily outdoors. Going into the settings tray, Samsung keeps it pretty minimal here. They don't bloat you too much in terms of the software, but you do get contacts, gallery, camera, video, calculator, clock, my files, memo, smart manager, calendar, email, settings, radio, Samsung milk, music, Galaxy app store, play store, Google apps. You do have a few things I installed there and pretty minimal stuff right there. Now, does it have themes? Let's check it out. No theming available here for this device. So that's a little bit of a bummer. But overall, you do have quite a few nice widgets in here as well. So you got dual clock, you got clock, you got that CNN widget there, Galaxy Essentials, which you're going to see right here. If I go over here, you do got the Galaxy Essentials. Now, right here, if you do add your weather, I haven't added mine yet, you get to use the Samsung weather look and feel. Now, in terms of the actual look of the calendar, looks very much like the Galaxy S. 7's calendar so it's a little bit of a mixed bag it's kind of like the icons kind of look like the ones on the galaxy s5 but when you go actually go into the one the, the application the in interior or the user interface looks more like the s7 so i would say this is a mashup of like the galaxy s5 android 6.0 and like the galaxy s7 android 6.0 but with android lollipop so that's why i say lollipop doesn't really matter too much being on here because you still get a very similar samsung experience now let's go into settings and see if we can find anything else that's included within the software here so I do want to mention that you do have the ability to drag this over if you want to make this easier to read. But starting up at the top, we do have airplane mode. We do have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, data usage. So those are basic stuff there. Sound and notifications. And let's go in there and see what we get there. Okay, so I have to drag this over just a bit. Let me drag this over. So you do get... I think I messed up. Let's go to sound and notification. You do get some of the sound and quality effects that you get from the Samsung, you know, user interface. Let's go into display. We talked about display modes. You got daydream mode, fonts, applications. You can change users. You can have guest users. We talked about wallpaper, so we're not going to get too in depth there. We have lock screen effects so you do have some lock screen effects here you do have water droplet and popping colors which is nice if you want to get a little bit customizing there you do have screen effects right there let's go to privacy privacy accessibility options and you have language and input battery storage date and time user manual and more so basically there's not too much extra that samsung included here i think it's a pretty bare bones touch whiz experience they do have a few special features like ultra power saving mode comes in handy you do have that reading mode that comes in handy if you want to read and have a more easy to you know eye experience on your eyes with a warm display now some people might not like warm displays but i haven't heard many people say that they like cool temperature displays uh, i think many people appreciate having a warm display when they are reading so yeah that's pretty much the samsung special features here like i say it's pretty much a mashup of the newer galaxy s7's look and feel with the s5's kind of icons with android 5.1 point one and there's a few you know crudel crucial i'd say crucial samsung features like ultra power saving mode power saving mode as well as the galaxy app store and an fm radio as well as the updated camera you don't get the double click to go into the camera though so if you're wondering that you don't get that but yeah that's the samsung special feature section of this video or the software now let's get into the tablet section centric features i would say of this tablet all right, guys, so welcome to this tablet centric features section of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A7.0. So there's not much in terms of tablet centric features except for one, and I'm going to show you that. So we're going to go into calendar 
and we do have split pane multitasking view. So you do get this on many, you know, Samsung Galaxy phones, but I find this to be a tablet centric feature because when you have a tablet display, you wanna be able to go ahead and multitask because you have this larger display. Now you do have the options to expand, you do have the options to exit out, flip the applications here. And if you're used to a Samsung device, you pretty much know what's going on with that. So let's go ahead and see what else the other things do. Let's go ahead here. And you can see you can drag and drop content from one side to the other. And pretty much that's that's it on tablet centric features. Also, I do want to mention that because this is a larger screen, it is set to be a tablet device out of the box. So sometimes you'll get a tablet device that can run phone applications, but this is the DPI and everything. Android Google Play Store reads it as a tablet. So if App, apps are not optimized for tablet they're not going to run on this device now like for example if you had a nexus 7 before those used to run phone applications sometimes but this one does not do it this only runs tablet centric applications what does that mean that just means if in the google play store you find an application the developer has not developed it for tablet it's not going to work on this device but yeah that's pretty much the tablet centric features you have the split pane multitasking for getting your multitasking done on on the larger display now let's get into the next section of this full review which is going to be the audio quality and the speakers of this device so in terms of the speaker and audio quality on the galaxy tab a 7.0 we do have it firing from the top left rear so this is not stereo sound there's no extra external mics or anything like that going on here like on the outside what i mean is on the front when i say external like over here on the front there's no mics over here or let's say speakers I said mics I, I mean speakers there's no speakers right here so basically everything is going to be channeling out this bottom right corner and you can easily cover this with a hand right here if you're gaming or doing something like this you can easily cover that up here on the device but overall it sounds okay I found that it sounds pretty solid but it didn't impress me at all in terms of the whole speaker experience. I'm not sure if you're gonna hear this right now, but let me go ahead and try to play a video. You might hear it, but I doubt you'll hear it because it's pretty, pretty low. Let's go ahead and put it all the way up. Congratulations, fellow human beings. We made it. We created a network that became the internet. We built brain-to-brain communications. So yeah, it's not the loudest device in the world, but it will get the job done. Um, that's pretty much how I got to sum this up. The speaker will get the job done. It's not going to blow you away, though. It's a pretty solid speaker, but it's not going to blow you away. Let's get into the next section of this review, and that is going to be the everyday performance and speed. Now, before we get into that section, though, I do want to talk about the headphone jack. When you do plug headphones in here, it does fit snug and headphones sounded actually really crisp out of this device. So in terms of the headphone quality, you don't have to fret at all. Headphone works very solid with Bluetooth 4.0 connection. You should be able to connect your headphones if you're one of those people, audiophiles, who likes to keep the headphones on all day when they're consuming content or creating content, whatever you're doing on your device. Um, you will have pretty strong quality out of this device if you're using headphones. So let's get into the performance speed. Let's go right now. All right, guys, now in terms of everyday performance and speed of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A, this has 1.5 gigs of RAM. It does have Samsung's TouchWiz UI, the newer, more, I would say, light UI. So overall, I found the performance to be pretty strong for its price. Now, when I say strong, I'm talking from the perspective of budget strong. I'm not talking from the perspective of flagship strong. So what I mean is that you can buy this device and you don't have to worry about it, you know, lagging up on you all day, but this is not a performance speed champion. So what I mean is that you're going to have strong performance as in the sense of you can count on this tablet. You can rely on this tablet to work. It's not going to, how would you say, lag up on you and just be a total mess. It's not going to overheat on you, things of that nature nature but it's also not going to blow you away in terms of speed now your galaxy smartphone more than likely will smoke this thing in terms of performance and that i'm talking about if you have an s7 an s5 not an s5 but like an s6 um, note 5 things of those natures s7 edge they will smoke this device so if you're trying to put this alongside of that device with your collection this might be a little bit slower than what you would like however it's not 
incredibly slow, meaning that you can get all the things you need to get done here um, pretty much with ease. But it's not like I say, it's just not blazing fast. And you're going to feel that if you're used to a blazing fast gadget. This is just not a blazing fast gadget, but it is a smooth and functional gadget. And, you know, with Samsung's lighter UI, basically, you can count on this guy to work. It's reliable performance and speed. wise. Like I can just show you if you're watching this example, you can see you've seen a little bit of a delay there when opening the application see right there just a little bit of the delay you have to wait a little bit for things to open on this device as whereas if you had like a let's say a galaxy tab s the s models they probably would open much quicker than this so I'm not bashing this. I think it's great performance for its price. Um, that's just, I'm just sharing my experience. I'm coming from a perspective of someone who uses a Galaxy Note 5, which has four gigs of RAM and two processor core or eight cores. It has four cores. So it does feel a little bit slower with similar software. But overall, I think for this price point, it's a very reliable and pretty decent performance overall. Just don't expect to be doing incredibly heavy things on here. And I don't think most people are going to be buying this with the intention of doing heavy things. You can still consume your content and and you can count on this tablet to work and work well for you. Just don't expect blistering speeds. So let's get into the next section of this device, which is going to be my overall experience and thoughts on the gaming performance of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A. All right, guys, I did download a couple of games and I got to tell you, my overall experience with the gaming performance was very similar to the overall everyday performance. So what I mean by like, like I talked about in the performance and speed section, Gaming was fine. It worked. It was reliable. But once again, you can see the load times are pretty much not incredibly quick. They take a while to load up games and things of that nature. As you can see we're still waiting on Alto's Adventure here. This would have been open on a more powerful device. But hey, once again, you didn't pay flagship level prices for this device. So I wouldn't expect this to run incredibly well in terms of speed. But it does play games and once they get loaded up there was a few frame rate drops here and there you could see a little bit of a frame rate drop on some games um, this is not going to run your top level games need for speed forza those kind of games it's not going to run those games but these light casual games it will run and when i mean it's not going to run those games it will start them up you can go download them but you're going to have a little bit of a laggy experience because it does have an adreno 306 not the top level gpu but overall, if you want to game on here, light gaming is going to be fine for you. But um, like I say, expect a little bit of load time when you uh, buy this tablet for gaming. So gamers, just expect a little bit of load time. Don't expect blistering for speeds and loading up the games on the Galaxy Tab A7.0. Now let's get into the next section of this video review, which is going to be the camera quality of this device. So speaking about the camera quality, one of the most important sections on a smartphone, well, this is a tablet. So this might not be the most important section to you, but at the end of the day, some people do use their tablets for taking pictures. And this is a seven inch, so it's not actually that big so you don't look too ridiculous using this it looks like a smartphone but I do want to talk a little bit about the camera software so Samsung does give you pretty strong software here in terms of the camera software here which is appreciable I like that so we have effects here you can see we have a few effects we got four effects we do have a timer over here to the left we do have the ability to go in you know different picture ranges so we got four by three we have one by one 16 by nine at 3.7 megapixels 3.1 megapixels 2 megapixels and the like going into the settings you do have quite a few settings here you can change the level of quality you're getting here now you only go up to HD and VGA and QVGA are pretty laughable so I wouldn't even use those but over here we have autofocus and macro modes we do have view modes where you can view full screen or standard you have the ability to put on location tags grid lines you can review your pictures after you take them volume keys function which is nice and you could reset the settings to default going back to the actual camera settings it's it's an easy affair you just open the camera up and you fire you point focus fire point focus fire and point focus fire and that's pretty much it same with video you just point and you start videoing you could pause the video you can stop the video there 
and I didn't find no autofocus raising or brightness exposure lifting techniques there in the auto mode but we do have the pro mode here so if you go into the pro mode here you do have the ability to raise what I was just talking about here the exposure modes you have ISO and you have white balancing there in the pro mode so that's pretty nice there also in pro mode they do give you the ability to meter so you can center weight you can matrix and spot meter so pretty nice stuff there in the pro mode section and also we do have the ability to go into panorama so you can do panorama you can do continuous shot beauty face for all you selfie maniacs out there although this selfie camera is probably the level of quality of something like the iPhone 5s just due to the you know being a 2 megapixel camera on the front you do have sound shot sports shot and animated gifs so very nice camera I do love this newer Samsung look and feel for the camera section and overall the camera and video quality is pretty solid here but I'm gonna show you guys some examples right now check out these two photo samples and check out this video sample. Let's go. So here is a video sample of the Galaxy Tab A 7.0. I am now firing directly from the audio coming from the tablet itself. It is a rather cloudy day here and I am showing you some green leaves here but I just want to show you the level of quality you're going to get on the Galaxy Tab A 7.0 with its 720p HD video. Let's see if we can get in focus here on the leaves and you can see there is the ability to focus here. So the video quality looks okay. It's not impressive but it's it'll work. It'll get the job done. So you can see right there that is the video quality of the Galaxy Tab A. Alright guys, so welcome to the pocketability and portability section of this review. Now, I'm not going to show you an example, but I'm going to talk to you about my experiences with this. Okay, so I do have big hands. I can palm a basketball, as you can see right here in this example. So this is a very portable, you know, device. So my hand could basically cover this entire device here. And if you don't got big hands, this is still not going to feel like a giant tablet. You can one hand this guy pretty easily if you got pretty, you know, large hands. So this is not a huge tablet. It's very portable. And in my experience, this is a very easy tablet to slip into a bag or anything like that. And it doesn't weigh you down. It's very light as well. So if you want, you know, something that's super portable, runs, you know, newer slick software from Samsung, as well as, you know, that portability and long battery life, you can see we only dropped 6% in this entire review. And that's running on pretty high brightness this is going to be a great tablet for that aspect also if you do if you wear dude sized jeans or larger jeans you're going to be able to slip this guy in your pocket you know it's not that much smaller than something like a large smartphone as i'm going to show you this example right here so that's an iphone 6s plus and you can see it's not that much bigger than an iPhone 6S Plus. So if you got large pockets, you can probably fit this guy into your pockets or jeans. So overall, the portability factor, the pocketability factor of the Galaxy Tab A is very strong if you got large, you know, dude size jeans. And even if I'm going to call this the purse factor, if you're a girl and you got a purse, the purse factor, it's a go there as well because if you got a purse, this will slip into your purse pretty easily as well. Not if you got one of those little, you know, Gucci bags that are like this big. It's not going to fit in there. That's like a wallet. But it'll fit into a regular purse or bags with ease. So pocketability and portability is a very strong suit for the Galaxy Tab A 7.0. Now, I can't do this review without talking about storage on the tablet. So a lot of you, a couple of you were saying, you know what, that tablet there is just, you know, that storage is annoying me. You know, it's eight gigabytes. I don't know if that's going to be, you know, something that's going to work out for me. So when I first got this, this device, it had about 4.27 gigs available space. So... After installing a few apps, I have about 3.6 available. But like I said, you can put up to a 200 gigabyte SD cards here. And if I go into my gallery, you can see I already have my SD card in there, which is gonna show a bunch of my pictures here from the LG G4. And so you have the ability to put SD cards in there to install movies and things of that nature. So I think that kind of makes up for the storage, although you're not able to move many applications to the SD card. I did try this, a couple were able to be moved, but not all of them and it didn't save too much storage so if you're worried about installing a bunch of applications on here 
You'll be able to install a good, I'd say, 30 to 50 applications if they're lighter applications with no problem here. But if you're going to install many games, you're going to have to kind of manage your storage in that way. Now, if you want to install a bunch of media on an SD card, use uh, this for photos and videos. Storage is never going to be a problem here. The only problem I would say you have is you're, if you're a heavy application guy, if most of what you do on your smartphone is messing with lots and lots of apps that are third-party apps, aka apps that aren't already pre-installed on the device and i'm talking not light applications like 30 to 50 i'm talking like you need 100 plus applications on your device and you don't like to go through and delete old applications that you're not using or basically manage your device this is not going to be a comfortable device in terms of the storage section of it so if that's you i would say skip this device but if you can deal with the whole fact that you only need like a good 10 to 20 maybe 30 strong core applications and you're going to be running you know photos and all that other stuff through your sd card you're going to be just fine here with the samsung galaxy tab a 2016 here so that's my take on storage you know it, it could be weak depending on who you are but the micro sd card slot makes up a lot for it although you're not able to move all of the applications to the sd card now let's get into the battery life section of this tablet all right, guys, if we're going to talk about battery life about the Samsung Galaxy Tab A, I said earlier it does have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and the battery life was very strong on this device. I mean, I don't want to talk too much about this. You do have power saving modes here and ultra power saving modes here, as well as the ability to check your battery percentage. Now, the battery life on its own without the power saving modes is strong so using the power saving mode increases it even more and ultra power saving mode just puts it you know on another level so i would say if you're worried about battery life this device is not going to let you down you can easily go a full day with this guy maybe two to three days if you're light on it with this device battery life is a very strong suit of the galaxy tab a 7.0 2016 and do not fret at all you have ultra power saving mode and power saving mode if you're going to be doing stuff that kills the battery quicker now in terms of charge times it did take about two hours to three hours to charge this baby up so it's not the fastest charging device in the world but it's also not the slowest thing i've ever seen so overall basically i have a positive outlook on the battery life a positive experience it's not going to let you down in terms of the battery life so now let's get into the next section of this video review which is going to be my personal negative points of the samsung galaxy tab a 7.0 all right, guys, so I'm going to talk about my personal negative points here, and then the next section I'm going to talk about my positives. But what are my negatives of this device? My negatives of this device are number one, the screen. You know, I seen, you know, Google do the whole 1920 by 1200 display on an affordable device of the time, the Galaxy, or not the Galaxy, but the Nexus 7 2013. And I think if Samsung really wants to sell a lot of these guys, which they're going to do anyway, um, I think if they want to, you know, really have a hit on their hands, I think they, um, it would be nice if they threw in a, just a little bit sharper of a screen, 1280 by 800 is not the most pleasing display to use here in 2016. Although for the price, I mean, it is acceptable, but 216 PPI is being destroyed by most smartphones. So that's my number one um, negative thing here of the Galaxy Tab A. Number two is storage. I talked about how you could get by, but let's face it, eight gigabytes in 2016 is very limited storage for most people. Now, a tablet is a device that you're going to want to load tons of media onto usually, and that's just not going to cut it here for people who are on a budget and they're trying to buy a cheap tablet with strong storage. The Kindle Fire HD8, which I did a video review on, you can check that video review, I'll leave that down in the link below, has 16 gigabytes of storage and it's cheaper than this tablet. So that's, you know, a negative there for this device. Now, another negative of this device is the overall performance wasn't incredibly pleasing i think touch Wiz is a little bit of a slower skin than something like the fire hd7 or the hd8 things of that nature i think amazon does a better job in that department and i'm not saying go out and buy the amazon tablet because i do think samsung software looks better and it, it, i just like it more because it's more android like amazon is a very bloated kind of software but it is pretty smooth for being a bloated software all i'm trying to say here is that the performance here is not very strong it is acceptable it is functional it's not going to let's say 
aggravate you, but it's something that's going to leave a little bit to be desired. Now, another negative point and probably my final negative point of this device is the cameras. If you're looking for a strong camera on a tablet, this is not going to be it, although it is functional and good. It's not um, it's not as horrible as other tablets I've seen. They're probably better than a lot of seven inch tablets, but still, this is not, you know, a device that you're going to want to take photos professionally with or do your videos on YouTube with. This is just not that tablet. And I think a lot of times when people buy tablets, they're trying to choose between a smartphone or a tablet. And this is not an all around smartphone replacement tablet there. So that's pretty much my negatives. Now I want to talk about my positives and they're quite a few. I always tend to lean more on the optimistic side. I do like to talk more positively about things because that's just the way I'm wired. But basically, let's get into the positive section of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 7.0. All right, guys, so talking about the positives of the Galaxy Tab A 7.0 2016, there are quite a few. Now, the first positive on this list is the battery life. This thing has pretty strong battery life, and I was very pleased with the battery life that I got on the Samsung Galaxy Tab A. Another positive of this device was the overall build quality of the device. Now, I love the grippy nature, and for this price, I felt like I got a premium product. Now, I'm not gonna say premium in the sense of glass and metal, but I feel like Samsung did not skimp out on the overall feel and the construction of this device. It does not feel like an incredibly cheap device, and I don't think if you bought this as a gift for somebody, a kid or something, they're not gonna be disappointed with the way this tablet feels and works. It's very enjoyable, and that's why I think it's got great ratings on most online retailers and Amazon and things of that nature. I will leave the Amazon link below. Also, I do like the ability to put a micro SD card slot up to 256 gigs. I think I said earlier that it's 200, but I confirmed that it is 256 gigs. So micro SD expansion is a plus. This tablet would have been pretty unbearable if it did not have that micro SD card slot right there. So that really helps it out overall. Another thing I like is the ability to one hand this tablet pretty easily. Just do Due to the fact that, like I say, it's pretty light and it has a very grippy back. So you can easily one hand this tablet if you're somebody who is used to the whole, you know, hand gymnastics of moving your hand back and forth on a bigger smartphone. It'll be pretty easy to maneuver this guy one hand if you're trying to show a client or somebody what you're doing on your tablet one hand and you got something else in your other hand. You know what I'm saying. Those situations do occur. Now, another thing I do like about this tablet was the rear camera. You know, I said it was not the greatest, but I think for a tablet, it's better than most tablets that fall in this price category. Now, I'm talking more of the consumer range tablets, not these ones you're going to find off on the third party market that nobody knows about. Some of those tablets do have, you know, better, you know, quality specifications sometimes, but they're very rare, very niche. Not a lot of people know what's going on with those. But overall, I thought this rear camera was pretty solid for a tablet. Like I say, it wasn't the best, but better than most tablets it's competing with in this price range. So that was pretty strong there for the Samsung Galaxy Tab A. Another thing I liked about this device is the reliability factor. Now, it's not the fastest device in the world, but it didn't lag up too much. It didn't have, how would you say, it didn't aggravate me with its reliability. I opened the tablet up, I can do my stuff, I can get it done, and I was not annoyed by glitches, lags, and things of that nature. Yes, it wasn't the fastest load times. I had to wait a half a second more than I usually do on other devices, but overall, it was pretty solid. And a final thing I did like about this is the Wi-Fi strength held pretty strong. So this is important because tablets don't have cellular, all of them, and this is not a cellular model. The Wi-Fi strength, even though it was not AC, it held on to my signal pretty strongly, and I didn't have no Wi-Fi issues. So I like that overall. And that's pretty much my positives of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A. Let's wrap this video review up with my conclusion and who this device is for. So here we are at the end of this video. First of all, I just want to say thank you all for sticking around. It means the world to me that you guys watch the entire videos and that you stick around and just, you know, engage with me. It's, it's just really fun to do these reviews and I appreciate all of your support. But with that being said, who is, who is this device for? Who is the Samsung Galaxy Tab A for? You might have already decided that this device is not for you or for you throughout this video, but I got to let you know this device is for somebody who wants to get a a tablet for their child they want to get a tablet for themselves but they are on a, a tight budget they're you know 
let's say trying to get their shit together or whatever and basically they just have a little bit of cash to spare but they want a tablet and they don't want to be left behind with some piece of junk tablet like you know an off brand or something like that samsung's got you covered here with the galaxy tab a 7.0 so basically it's an entry level tablet if you're somebody who's looking for a tablet as a gift for a kid that's going to get smudgy fingers on it baby food all that kind of stuff and you're not you don't want to blow a bunch of money but you also want a reliable experience where you're not going to have to buy them a tablet again this is going to be a solid tablet also this could be a tablet for somebody who's going into college for the first time they need something to read their pdf files on their Books, their emails, but they don't need something super powerful because they got their laptop, but they just want a companion device to help them out in their schooling. This could be an amazing device for you. Also, this can be a device for somebody who's just now entering the tablets. You're an older person. Maybe you're up there in age and you're just not into this whole techie thing. You just want something that's reliable, easy to use, affordable price point. And it does offer an FM radio and things of that nature. This can be a great device for you. So if you fall into any one of those categories, I would say go ahead and pick up the Samsung Galaxy Tab A. There's not much competition in the 7-inch category anymore. You do have the Fire 7, but the Fire 7, I do not think is better than this tablet. Even though it's about $100 cheaper, it just can't quite match the Samsung Galaxy Tab A in terms of the overall screen quality, the overall camera quality. The software itself is, is much more expansive here with the Play Store as well as as the micro SD card expansion slot and the stronger battery life over the Fire 7. So yeah, that's pretty much my take on it. If you guys enjoyed this video review of the Samsung Galaxy Tab A 7.0, do me a favor, go ahead and click the like button for me. Subscribe to the channel for more technology videos like this. We do reviews, vlogs, and anything and everything that comes to mind technology around these parts. Have a great day wherever you are. Have a great morning wherever you are. Have a great night wherever you are, depending on your time zone. I will catch you all in the next one. Be be sure to be well and peace.